Hi, this is me, sort of from the future. I made this video yesterday, I edited it last night, and I found out that all the stuff I did yesterday, I made quite a few videos yesterday, and the overhead camera was out of focus. It doesn't really matter for this one, but it does for others, so as I'm recording everything I did pretty much again, I thought it was quite worth doing a little preamble on this because it's 25 minutes long and a lot of that is just me going through these sounds, trying to find differences, really, really picking into it in case there's anything really definitive that I've missed and I don't think there is. So as an executive summary, uh, the Blue Marvin is a tiny bit brighter, it appears, on the oscillators. The filters sound identical and the reverbs are obviously different. So this sound I've got here is modulating the amount of FM coming from VCO2 into the filter, that's on full resonance, modulating that with the ADSR as well. So, that was the Blue Marvin. So maybe very, very minor differences there in attack times or something, but you can hear. that they are extremely close. Now, these have been set up yesterday, so I've not gone in and tuned everything to the nth degree this morning. I've just turned them back on again. So it's more than likely one of them's gone off by a cent or two, but they are very, very close as you can hear. And let's just add some reverb into that. Obviously, the Blue Marvin has got the actual spring reverb in, and the big difference is that this is a bit brighter and not as dark, and the tail is much longer. So that's still going there, still going, stopped about now. So a much shorter reverb on the digital one and longer and clearer maybe on the real spring. And it's still going, you can hear, I won't wait. I can still hear that, <laughs> right. And I do think you get the sort of tone of the spring on the Blue Marvin, and this will be the same for the Grey Mini as well. You can actually hear the spring, you can hear the tone within the spring. So that's the main difference. The other one is that when I turn the reverb full on the Blue Marvin, if you whack the volume up, you can hear some noise, and you get zero on the black and orange. So that's basically what I explain over the next 25 minutes. But if you're interested in those minor details, carry on watching. And if you don't want to carry on watching, please still think about subscribing and join me over on Patreon. Anyway, let's, uh, let's move to the main video, shall we? Okay, so I've got in front of me the Behringer 2600, their original version, which is the black and orange version. And I've also got the blue Marvin. And this has been kindly lent to me by Dominic Hawkin while I waited for mine to arrive. And mine has uh, just, just arrived this morning. So I've got a fair few of these in the house at the minute. So this is Dominic here, also known as MrWiggly.co.uk. And he's releasing some plugins. This one's called the Incinerator. And I'll probably look at doing some sort of review or demo of this in the next few weeks. It's really quite cool. Anyway, thanks Dominic for loaning me the Blue Marvin. It's very kind of you and much appreciated by me and I'm sure everyone else that's watching this video. So cheers for that. Now according to Behringer, Blue Marvin is a limited edition, ultra affordable and even more feature packed homage to the Icon ARP 2600. And where it says it's even more feature packed than the original 2600, it's not referring to this 2600, it's referring to the ARP. These two have both got exactly the same features as has the grey Mini. But compared to the original Behringer 2600, the Blue Marvin features a mechanical spring reverb hand-picked components and unicolor LEDs on each fader. Now, I've spent a few hours going through these, trying to find what the difference these hand-picked components have made. I've looked at the filter in massive depth. I've looked at the oscillators as well. And it's really, really difficult to pin it down. Sometimes you think you're hearing things and maybe you're not. Then you check stuff out on your oscilloscope and you're, you know, you're just imagining little differences. So this could be the quickest video I've ever done really and just say no difference except for the reverb but there is tiny differences so I'll just run you through what I've done so you get an idea of the magnitude of the differences if you can hear any at all so what I've got here I've got well I've got very proud of myself 
in that I've color coordinated my patch cables even to the outlets being blue and purple and these ones over here being yellow and red. I think it looks quite nice, quite like that. But other than that, what I've got set up here at the minute is the um, is the oscillator coming direct to the VCA on both of them. Ignore all these other cables, they'll come into play in a minute. But basically what I'm doing is I'm listening to oscillator three direct into the VCA and we're ignoring anything to do with the filters on both. I've set them up, I've tuned them, and we've got a sawtooth coming through oscillator three. On this keyboard I've got in front of me, the left hand side is playing the Blue Marvin and the right hand side is playing the 2600. They're both going through a Focusrite Scarlet. They're going through the inputs at the back that don't have the preamp um, knobs. So they're both giving exactly the same signal. I'm turning them up exactly the same amount. So we should be getting identical signals. Okay, so we'll start off then with the sawtooth on the Blue Marvin. Over to the 2600. Now, I think there's a slight difference in the brightness of the Blue Marvin. I've tried to, as I say, I've tried to level everything up as best I possibly can. If we look at the oscilloscope, What would you say that's around 18 kilohertz, maybe 18 and a half? And we go over to the 2600. That's a little bit less. And you can see I've increased the gain on those EQs. That's what that light blue portion is. And that's just so that we can see the much higher frequencies. Otherwise they look identical. But they look identical and you listen and you listen and you listen and you think you can hear something. So increase the, the volume it just means that we can see what's going on the higher end. Play something higher up. So there is a difference there. Um, it's very, very minor. But I know if I was playing two different synths, say one was an original ARP and one was a uh, software emulation, people would say, I can really hear a difference. So there is a minor one there. You can slightly hear the difference in tone. Ba, 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 ba. And they're pretty identical on the tuning. Maybe this one's a tiny bit low, but it's really difficult to get them absolutely exact. Is that a difference? Am I imagining it? Does it matter? Probably not. Well, definitely not, I don't think. I just don't know. With the Juno 106 and the Softube Model 84, I was getting to the same stage where I'm not sure whether I'm going do da do da in my head and then change it round and it's da do da do. Is that do da do da? Or is it da do da do? And then you play them around the other way and you realize it's the same effectively, isn't it? Yeah, I think I'm coming to the conclusion that they're identical, maybe, say identical, maybe a tad brighter on the Blue Marvin. It's what's shown on the oscilloscope, it's what I thought I heard, so maybe, but it's not something where I, I'm gonna buy the Blue Marvin because it's a lot brighter and sharper sounding. But let's have a listen to the pulse, shall we? And these to me sound a bit closer actually. Although, again, looking at the very high end on those EQs, the Blue Marvin is a little bit brighter. And it's also got a few more, as it did with the Sawtooth actually, a few more harmonics around that top end. So maybe that gives it the brightness that you can hear because anything over sort of 15, 17 kilohertz, I'm not gonna hear anyway, but. <laughs> but 
So looking between the four and six kilohertz, there seems to be just a bit more activity with those lines, <laughs> with the harmonics uh, on the Blue Marvin than it does on the 2600. So just look at that again quickly. And if we go back to the sawtooth, just to show you it was doing something similar there as well. Although doing it that time, they look absolutely <laughs> identical, those two. Let's try another, just try another note. Yeah, so there you can see there's more going on on the high end on the Blue Marvin. But as I say, I don't know if that impacts on the sound at all. I'm just trying to find minor differences where these little hand-picked components <laughs> might have done something. So let's go to the triangle now. I suspect this is going to be a lot less. I did play with it yesterday, but just because there's less harmonics in this, isn't there? Hear that little click in there, and that's because I've got the envelope set slightly differently. Again, it sounds a little bit brighter over here. Getting a little bit more of that buzz coming through on the Blue Marvin. I can say all this, and it might just be because on the Scarlet, the two inputs are slightly <laughs> configured slightly differently, or just they've got the tolerance of them is different. But yeah, that one does sound buzzier, doesn't it? So again, let's move over to the sign. I have to try and remember what I did for the little test later, and what I'm unplugging. Now there's a distinct difference in tone there. I say distinct, you know, it's a sine wave, but there's a difference there, isn't there? So um, Oscillator-wise, there are minor differences, as I say, whether that's to do with the tolerances inside the focus right or the new hand-pick components in these, I don't know. Uh, but it's very, very close, and it's not something you will pick one over the other four. So, I've looked at the oscillators, I've been ignoring the filter, let's bring the filter in now because that's where I actually thought all the main differences would be and I fail to notice any. I might, might find something now and I try it again, but let's, uh, let's move over to the filter. Okay, so these aren't doing anything at the minute. Um, they're just sitting there for my little test later. But let's, uh, let's listen to a sawtooth on VCO3 again. So again, no difference. Just listen to a note individually. Only thing I can see on the oscilloscope is that again, the Blue Marvin's just got a little bit more activity up in that four to six kilohertz region, but the difference in tone we're hearing there is the same difference in tone that we were hearing with the oscillators, isn't it? So let's add some resonance. So about halfway and they sound very similar still.
Interesting, as I turn my head and look at the oscilloscope, the tone changes. So sometimes it could be, it's that subtle that I'm looking this way when I'm playing that, and I'm looking that way when I'm playing this. <laughs> Try it yourself, put it on some speakers, and just twist your head and you get those differences in tone. <laughs> Which you might expect, but it does maybe account for some of the differences people hear every now and then. Just trying to tune the resonance there. A little bit more resonance on that. Let's just turn this one up a little. And we're getting that beep, boop, beep, boop again. But again, I think that's just a tuning issue. Maybe let's just listen to the resonance and tune the resonance on its own. So turn the oscillators off. really handy having this fine tuning for stuff like this and it's why they call it um, a voltage controlled resonator not just a voltage controlled filter now they sound exactly the same to me let's flick it over to the 4012 that's identical isn't it so let's have a listen to that with a oscillator. Bring in the VCO3 sawtooth again. So even the detuning when I'm moving up the keyboard isn't changing. So the differences in the harmonics between them staying the same. Again, let's try that on the 4072. Minor difference there, again that e -oo. So there's something there, isn't there? But again, I don't know if it's just the tuning changing again, but I don't think so. Both still perfectly in tune. So slightly different, but again, it could just be because these are two analog synths, and if I had two 2600 black and oranges in front of me, or two blue Marvins, I might get the same, but, and I'm, <laughs> and no, I'm not gonna get this one out the box and have a go with that as well. It's took too long to set this up. Just, you know, is it worth getting that for the differences in filter? Well, at the minute, it's not sounding like it. Let's just test what we do as we increase the resonance. And you can hear there's a slight change in tone, about a semitone just under it, where as you go into um, maximum resonance, it dips down a little. Let's try that on the Blue Marvin. Yeah, there's a minor difference, but as I say, that could literally be the calibration, you know, when you're setting the synths up in the first place. Let's try a bit of modulation with it then. And this is where these additional cables have come in. What I've been trying to do is just modulate it with VCO2.
what I'm not getting is any, wow, that's different. That sounds completely different or I'm getting a much better tone from one from the other. Maybe a bit mellower on the Blue Marvin, but again, you know, without spending hours and hours going through it, trying to look for the differences, there's no big obvious, wow, that's massively different. It's all very subtle. So let's move over to the big one then, which is the reverb. Just got a simple sawtooth through VCO3 on the filter on each. The filter's completely open. So we're getting a similar sound going in, or identical, depending on how you look at it. And we'll play the reverb on the Blue Marvin first. So that's the real spring reverb, and this is the emulation on the 2600. So the first thing you notice is it doesn't last as long, so, uh, and it's darker. So 2600 again. And the Blue Marvin. Goes on a lot longer and it's got more of a sort of a singy tone. There's a definite tone in there. You can hear the spring itself. So the biggest difference, apart from the paint job and the LEDs, is the spring reverb. And I think I prefer the Blue Marvin. Well, I do prefer the Blue Marvin for what I've been doing, just messing around now. Uh, I don't know that it'd sit better in a mix. I've not done a mix with it yet. But I definitely pre prefer the brighter sound uh, over the black and orange version. Although its own tone, its own sort of note, does take over a little, doesn't it? So that's interesting, the, uh, the black and orange version does seem to sit better when you play something. I don't know, it's just two flavours actually. I think I do think I prefer the Blue Marvins. It seems a little bit more open than the orange and black version, but it's not like one's better than the other really. I think they're just two separate tones. Of course, on the orange and black you can't do this. <laughs> if that's important to you at all. And I suppose uh, the Blue Marvin and the Grey Mini will be a little bit more delicate because they do actually have a spring reverb in them. I do think the Blue Marvin sounds more authentic as a spring reverb, but then it is a spring reverb, so it's about as authentic as it gets. It's a little bit noisier, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. I've got to turn it up in the studio, or in the kitchen at least. There is some noise in there that you're not getting on the orange and black version. but it's very, very quiet. If you had the reverb turned up that full, <laughs> well, I'm not sure what you'd use it for really, except for the odd ambient little noise here and there, but.
So there you go. I don't think there's much mileage actually in trying to recreate one patch to the other. Firstly, it takes hours to get them sounding exactly right. And secondly, they'll sound exactly right. And if they're not exactly right, it's because one of these knobs, one of these sliders is a fraction of a millimeter out. So uh, I hope that was of some use to somebody somewhere. Uh, and if it was, please hit subscribe or think about joining me over on my Patreon page where I've got over six hours worth of tutorials demoing how to get the most out of your synths and tutorials with basically each module by module me going through and showing you how they work with demos of various bits of kit so um, I will see you next time <laughs>